If you're a regular viewer to my channel, you'll know that I love creating Star Trails images and also Star Trails videos. And over the past few years, I've been working on longer and longer exposures. But ever since I saw this photograph of a 24 hour Star Trails taken from the South Pole, I've had this dream of recreating that from the UK, but by using a combination of images taken throughout the year. And I actually first started to try and achieve this three years ago. And guys, it is really, really difficult. And three times I had to abandon the project and start again from scratch. Now I got a new wide angle lens. So it's at my first proper wide angle lens in January, 2020. So I decided I was gonna start again and start doing the project properly. So I changed my position slightly, marked the ground where the tri iPod would go, set it to the same height, used all the same settings, and I'll list my settings in the description box below. And I did my best to get things lined up exactly the same. Now I've done seven different imaging sessions from that same spot, and you've probably seen the big tree star trails with my greenhouse roof many times on the channel. Um, what I did, despite so many sessions there was still this one little bit that was missing and I was looking at some images I took the other night and I was thinking I'd missed my chance until next spring and I was kind of at the point of complete meltdown um, again <laughs> this project has nearly killed me but I decided on the night of the 24th of April to just do from twilight onwards through till dawn and just see what happened what I got when I stacked the images and looked at them I realized that I had actually completed that spot, I actually had the missing chunk. So I only needed to use the images from four sessions because I basically imaged all night long. And I will run the time lapse videos from each of those back to back in a second. Now there's actually 32 hours and 10 minutes of star trails here. So there was a huge amount of overlap between the sessions. And that led to a few difficulties when I was blending them together but I'll talk about that at the end. So I'll just run those videos through now so you can watch those and I'll just briefly mention the the lengths and the times that were included in those little time-lapse videos. So this one is the 30th of July 2020. I didn't need to include the one from earlier in the year in 2020. Uh, so this one was four hours and 30 minutes of video. This is the longest that I've ever done in one go. It was 11 hours, 50 minutes on this video, but I was actually imaging for longer than that. And this was on the 25th of November, 2020. So this remains my longest star trails that I've ever done in one go. Um, I've come close to it a few times, but this is still my record. This is the 25th of February 2021 and this was 10 hours and 35 minutes as well. Obviously we get a lot more darkness in the winter so you can do these super super long exposures and it's just great that we've had skies clear enough to actually do this. It's not very often that we get a night that clear in the UK and I seem to have been quite lucky on that regard. Um, it doesn't normally happen in the UK. <laughs> And finally, this was the 24th of April 2020, and this was five hours and 15 minutes of star trails. And you can see that there was a bright moon here. There's um, quite a lot of uh, background illumination because the moon was um, a gibbous moon visible most of the night. And here is the final result. Um, guys, as I said earlier, this was so incredibly difficult, way more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Each set of data was stacked using star stacks, and then I blended those together in Photoshop. Now, I didn't get my camera 100% perfectly aligned each time. As you would have noticed from the videos, the trees kind of moving a little bit. Um, also, the lens distortion 
is slightly different because of that. Um, so Polaris wasn't in the same spot in each video um, and each stacked image. So that meant the lens distortion is different between the different frames. Now I did try and correct that in Lightroom, but everything I did actually made that matter worse. But that means there are places where the stuff overlaps, where there are these little spurs kind of sticking out. And that's basically down to a, a lens distortion effect that I haven't been able to correct. Also, where there was a big overlap between the sessions, the overlapped parts were brighter than the bits either side. So that can make it look like there are staggers and bits missing when actually they are full circles. So a combination of them not perfectly lining up because of the lens distortion and the differences in illumination make it look a bit strange. But also I hadn't taken into account what effect the moonlight would have. So on the nights where there was a lot of moonlight, the fainter stars are getting washed out so again it looks like some of the circles aren't complete and the only thing I could do there is redo this under a new moon each time so this isn't completely perfect and my photoshop skills you know aren't really up to fixing that but that would be getting into the realms of fake astro pics anyway but one thing that I think is really interesting when you look at this is at the very center we have the pole star or polaris and we're always told that the pole star is directly above the north celestial pole but as you can see from this picture the pole star isn't perfectly aligned with the pole if I just zoom in on that, you can see that the bright star in the middle there is Polaris and it's painted out its own little circle. And then the middle of that is just basically empty sky. Now, this is where my picture differs a lot from the southern kind of south pole one that you saw because they don't have a star at the south celestial pole in the southern hemisphere so their star trails will have a much bigger gap at the middle compared to the one that um, that I've taken so <laughs> there's um you know quite a few issues here and I think if I'd had a fixed peer there are lots of things that would have worked better as I said my photoshop skill I quite dodgy and also I think I should have just restacked only the data that I needed to reduce some of that overlap but it, this has been ongoing for so long and I'm so glad that I can finally say that I've done this and just move on because I honestly am bored to death of doing star trails with that tree there and also don't forget that I've chosen to do this over a long period and I've got something organic in the foreground which obviously has grown between the shots so I had to blend everything back in with a, one of the foregrounds from one of the imaging sessions also the brambles on the left were different levels of growing throughout each session if I did this again ever it would not have any trees in the foreground because they really did give me a bit of a headache but I'm relieved to get this done and I'm pleased that I've proved that in theory this technique will work I know it could be executed better but to be honest I'm proud that I've got this far so I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you enjoyed seeing this picture and I'll see you in my next video